But what we're going to look at today, four keys to outdoing your past and walking in greatness. Four keys to outdoing your past and walking in greatness. Praise the Lord. So the first thing we're going to look at is this. The first key, if you want to outdo your past and walk in greatness, the first thing is that you have to do things that you've never done before. Because you, you, it, it doesn't make sense for you to think that you will just keep on doing things the same way, business as usual, same old, same old, and then you, you will do great things. No, it will not happen. If you want to outdo your past, you have to be ready. And then you have to do things that you've never done before. So you, you look at it. What are the things you've never done before? Look at Joshua. So let's go to Joshua chapter 3. The scripture that pastor used to introduce to us our year of greatness. In verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee, in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. This was what God said to him this day. And for us, it has started. This day. And you know, we looked at this on, 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 on New Year's Day. How Joshua walked in greatness and how we ought to walk in greatness. The steps we need to follow. And you know, in verse 8, it says, God began to give Joshua instructions. Because we found out that that word magnify also means to do great things. It doesn't just mean to be made great. It means to do great things. You can't be great with, apart from what you do. Your greatness is connected to what you do. Praise the Lord. And so God gave Joshua an instruction. He said, And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, you shall stand still in Jordan. Verse 9, And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby shall you know that the living God is among you, and that he will drive out from you, from before you, the Canaanites and all the other ites that are in the land. It's very long, so I don't want to read them. Verse 11, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over you before it. Pass it over before you into Jordan. Now, therefore, take ye twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, and out of every man, out of every tribe a man. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. Joshua did something he had never done before. You know what he did? He told them, he said, come and hear God's word. This is what's going to happen. When the priests take the ark and they stand by the brink of the water and they will stand, he told them, the water shall be cut off. Joshua had never talked to them like that before. He had never told them that this would happen before. And then they did it. Something that they had never done before. Joshua had never divided the Jordan before. He had never divided any water before. So for you, what is that thing that you have never done before? What is that thing that has looked like, wow? Because, they, see, God wanted, the time had come for them to cross over to the other side. But the river was flooding. Bible says that the river of the, the waters of the Jordan overflew, over, 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 overflowed its banks. There was a flood. It was flooding. It was at the, God did not tell them to cross when it was dry season. He didn't tell them to cross when everything was okay. Even if it was not dry season, at least there was no flood. It was at the, in the middle of the river flooding. The Lord said, cross now. The Bible says we walk by faith. This is one of the things I want, I want you to learn to do. Walk by faith, not by sight. That, that's, that's who we are. It's the same way a fish, the fish lives in water. So it's not something that you have to and now I'm going to walk by faith. No, your life, your nature is to walk by faith. But a lot, of, a lot of Christians have been living against their nature. But our nature is to walk by faith. So there was a time that the rivers were flooding, God said, cross. And he told them that by the time you put your leg inside, he didn't say, wait for the water to stop flowing and enter. 
He said, when you put your leg inside, it will stop flowing. So, which water do you have to put your leg inside? For each of us, is a different question. It's a different answer, I mean. Which water? Some of you, is the water of tights. You never put your leg inside that water of tights. <laughs> you've never put your leg inside you've avoided it you've gone around the river you've tried to build a, ridge, a bridge over it God is saying put your leg inside if you, no, if you want to outdo your past you have to do something you've not done before some of you you've never given a thousand pounds in God's house as I'm saying it now it looks impossible thousand pounds thousand thousand uh, even the accent changes at that time. Before they would say thousand, but now they say give thousand, 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 <laughs> because they're watching. <laughs> you know, you have to do something if you want to receive a harvest you never received before. You must sow a seed you've never sown before. Is it not true? If you if you normally you sow one bowl of seed. You know the harvest that comes from one bowl of seed. No matter how much you pray for that seed, you know the harvest that will come for it. Isn't it true? But one bucket of seed will multiply. The harvest will be multiplied compared to one bowl of seed. Is that not true? So this year of greatness, uh -uh, don't just say, oh, God has made me great. God has made me great. And you're not doing the same thing. You're like the, you're like the eagle that came on the ground and began to eat the same food that chickens were eating. Living against your nature. So this year, you will put your leg inside that water that you've never put your leg inside. Some of you, you've never led somebody to Christ before. Because you're wondering, what will I say? What will I say? Huh. God will give you many opportunities and the Lord has blessed you to notice it. Just tell them. When they start telling you their problems, begin to share the gospel, good news with them. You can even start by saying, I will pray with you because I know God answers prayer. They say, oh, God answers prayer. Share your testimony with them. When you share your testimony with them, you say, you know what? You're, you can, the same thing can happen to you. The first thing, just give your life to Christ. It, it's as simple as that. It, it, it goes from progression to progression. But when you make up your mind, you will do it. You will now find. And when the best thing is that you, you yourself will be so surprised at how easy it was. The woman that got a whole Samarian town saved, what did she do? She met Jesus by the well. She went back to the men. She didn't even go to the women because she and the women were not friends. She went back to the men of the town and said, come and see this man that told me everything I've ever done. Is this not the Messiah? That's all she said. She didn't say, you know, in the beginning was the word, the word was the God. No. She didn't preach any long message. All she said was, come and see this man that told, this was how he impacted my life. That's all she did. I said, okay, let's go and meet him. And they went to go and meet him, and he said, please, come on, come on, we want to hear more. That's how the whole town gave their lives to Christ. So it doesn't have to be anything to come. So some of you have never preached the gospel. You've never even opened your mouth. You've always, the mouth has always been muted. This year, open it. God will feel it. God will feel it. You're wondering what to say. Just open your mouth and start. Then you'll be talking. Sometimes, the, and the words will start coming so fast, so fast. Sometimes you even have to make yourself slow down. Because by, by that time, the Holy Spirit is now working in you. A lot of times we think we have to do it by ourselves. Say, no, the Bible says this year, it is God working in us. The waters were cut off. It stopped flowing. As soon. So this year, the same thing. Then number two, for you to outdo your past and walk in greatness. You have to be ready to do uncommon things. Uncommon things. Let's go to Genesis chapter 26. You have to be ready this year to do uncommon things. The Lord will call on you to do things other people are not doing. He will call on you to pray at hours other people are sleeping. He will call on you to go and visit people that everybody has said, let's not talk to him anymore. Mm -mm. He will call on you to befriend and, and, and build up people that have been cast away. He will call upon you to do things that everybody is saying, no, that thing cannot be done. 
but by, 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 by even by nature, it cannot be done. It's unnatural to expect any results from doing this thing. He will call on you, and your, your job is to respond. When God gives that call, when God said, go to Jericho, there was a wall there. Big wall, high. They were, it was so big, there were houses in it. And the Bible said, Jericho was shut up. But the Lord said, don't worry. This is what you will do. And when God gives you a strategy, it will be simple. Very simple, but just follow it. He walked around the wall. He and the men, they walked around the wall seven days, on the sixth day, seven times. And he said, shout. How hard is it to shout? They shouted. As they shouted, the walls came down. And Joshua was a great man. So for us, this, this, this year, we will do uncommon things. We will do things others may not do or may not be willing or ready to do. But we will do them. Even when it looks unnatural, we will break the power of natural law this year. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So Genesis chapter 26. Let's see what happened. There was a great man that did some <laughs> uncommon things. Verse 1. The Bible says, And there was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto, the, unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerah. So I think he went to go and tell him, I'm leaving. Because you know when there's famine in a place, people start migrating to where there's no famine or where there's food. Verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Don't go. I think Egypt had food, so he wanted to go there. He wanted to go where it looked more prosperous. God told him, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Then he said, sojourn in this land. He said, this one that you're in, stay there. You want to go, it, it looks better in Egypt. Don't, everybody is going to Egypt now. Everybody is migrating to Egypt now. Because there's a famine in the land. He said, no, but you, Ab you Isaac, don't go to Egypt. Stay where you are. Then he said this, he said, and I will be with thee. And will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed. I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath. Which I swear unto Abraham thy father. So Isaac verse 6. Look at what verse 6 says. What happened? The Bible says. And Isaac did what? Isaac dwelt in Gerah. The Lord say, he said stay there. So you know what happened was. Isaac went to Gerah to meet the king. The, the king of the Philistines. And God said stay there. Where you've come to to meet this king don't go stay here so the bible isaac dwelt in gera and then look at what happened we said for you to outdo your past you must do uncommon things look at verse 12. he was in a land where there was famine remember the bible says then isaac sowed in that land <laughs> in a land of famine the, what are you doing sowing in a land that's why the others have gone because there's famine. When there's famine, things don't grow. The soil becomes dry, like powder. It's not conducive for sowing. But Isaac did something that was not common. It was not common. The Bible says, and Isaac sowed in that land. And what happened? Received in the same year a hundredfold. Oh, and the Lord blessed him. This year, we will sow. This year, you know, like I told you, there, 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 are some, there are some things that I sowed that I was not, when I was not working. And I found, that I, I, found, I found myself sowing those kind of seeds at the time I was not working. But, but God was taking me somewhere. Praise the Lord. And the same thing for you. Even when it looks dry, even when it looks like it's not, this is not the right time to do it. There's some th things that will look like it's not the right time. Even everybody around you. What do you think his neighbors were saying when they saw Isaac going? Do you think he was, he was planting in the night? In broad daylight, in front of everybody, Isaac was going to dig the ground and put his seed in the ground. No, they thought there was something wrong with him. Well, we don't know. Um, who was his wife? Rebecca. His wife was Rebecca. I believe that she believed. If not, she may have talked him out of it. <laughs> no, it's true. She must have believed. 
Because who, who knows what she would have said? She would say, you're embarrassing me in front of everybody. Well, Isaac still did it. And people must have thought there was something wrong with him. No, really. Sometimes we just read, read this simple verse and we think, we don't, we don't realize what, what was going on in that man's life to have taken this action. And you know, you don't sow seed in one day. It takes effort. Even when the soil is good, it takes effort to do it. So think about the fact that he had to put in all this effort. And by natural law, nothing should have come out of it. Nothing should have come out of it. But the Bible says in that same year, he received a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Then look at verse 13. And the man works great. We had not heard that Isaac was great before. Until he did something uncommon. We had not heard it before. The Bible says, and the man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Let me tell you something, what happened here. We think, sometimes we think that Isaac just planted and was eating for himself. No. Isaac was the only one who had food to sell. He was the only one who had food to sell. Because he did what others were not ready to do. Some of you, you on, on during the vision 2014, we made you, we said you must do your partnership. We, you know, but let me tell you something. Now that you have taken that step, now that you've done what you are not you were not doing in 2013, expect a harvest. Because you are putting seed in the ground. And you must speak your harvest. Every time you do your partnership, you say, Thank you, Lord, for the blessing. As I give this partnership, I am blessed. There is a harvest of blessing. There is a harvest of grace. I am increasing in blessings. I am able to do this, continue to do this, and to do even more. You speak it out. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 14. For he had possessions of flocks, and possessions of herds, and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. They envied him. He became so great. So the Bible says he, he, he became great. He worked great. He went forward. He made progress. So why? Isaac did what nobody else around him was ready to do. So this year, you must, be, you must do what nobody else around you is ready to do. And people will come to you. Because they came to him and they said, Isaac, we want food. He said, okay, we want food. is two camels. We want food. is two cows. But said, he now had great possessions. Because people were coming to exchange, exchange, and maybe the people were even giving him their servants. He said, okay, we don't have any more cows, but you can take the servants. Because he said he had a great, he had great possessions, a great store of servants. He did something other people were not ready to do. This year, we're going to do the same. Hallelujah. Then another key is that you have to realize you cannot build anything great. Without a well-defined plan. It's not going to happen. You want to do something great this year. Anything. Some uh, Plans don't have to be um, very elaborate. We're not talking, we didn't say without a, an elaborate plan. We said well-defined. In, in, in project management and in, in business, there they, they, they are things that they call smart plans, smart goals. It doesn't have to be long. It can be like four lines. Five, no, at the, at the most six lines. It doesn't have to be too long. But you have to know who, what, when. And a lot of time people miss out the when. And that when must be specific. A lot of times, I, I, I found out that the times I'll send a, a message out to maybe my cell leaders or a worker or so, and I say, I want you to do this. And I don't give them a time for it to be done. Usually it's not done. I've, I've seen it over time. So now I will tell them, because sometimes I'll say, and just to just this money, I did, I did it. It was a mistake. I sent a message out to someone. I said, I want a list of this, this, this. But I didn't tell her when I want the list. So I'm going to have to go back to that email to say, I want it by this date. Because the date defines at what speed you walk. The date defines that this thing it is a commitment to a time. It must be done by this time. So you must have a well-defined plan. You must be specific about what you want to do. You know, they, they call about smart plans. 
the S stands for being specific, the M is measurable. So not all, well, all, all, not all your plans have to be measurable. Well, it, but usually they are measurable because you can measure it by this was what I wanted and this was what I, what I accomplished. Oh, um, by the way, please, after, the, after this service, can this pulpit be cleaned? Spray windolin or something and clean it because there are lots of um, grease marks on it. Praise the Lord. You see, I gave you a time now. I didn't just say clean it. I said by the end of this service. Praise God. So, you, you measure by what you want to achieve. So it's measurable. Then the A, what does the A stand for? Achievable. Thank you very much. Because I, I was trying to remember what the A stood for. Then the R is what? What's the difference between achievable and realistic? But they're achievable. How can it be achievable and not be realistic? Yes, but uh, Dave. They're achievable. If maybe you want you say it has to be done in one hour, but it's not realistic for it to be done in one hour. Say you, you start a business with uh, 20 pounds and you want to achieve 1 million profit. It, it's achievable, but it's not realistic. It's achievable to, to have profit, but it's not realistic to expect... Uh, 1 million. 1 million from 20 pounds. Yeah. You can have 1 million from zero. No, you can have 1 million from zero. With the time. The time oh, with the time. Your time we have given. Is that, that is achievable, but then in that day and time, you're saying that it's, it's not realistic okay. that you can make one, uh, 1 million pound profit on a 20 pound win in, in one within week. Within one week, yes. Okay, I see what you mean. So, so that's the difference between achievable and realistic. And what does the T stand for? Time-based or time-bound. So you must have a well-defined plan. Your plan must have a date. Just like when I asked, the, the, I was asking the workers, your partnership, when will you do your Rhapsody partnership? Some will say, beginning of, I said, no, when? I wanted, I wanted to pin you down. So those of you, you know yourselves, what are you supposed to do today? But as someone, you can represent them. What? To who? Uh -huh. So those who have not been doing their absolute partnership that told me that they would do it, I told them, see, it was well-defined. I said, you bring it to me. I don't, I don't want it. I want to see it. And I told them when to bring it to me. See, the who is there and the when is there. And the how, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Okay, let me show you a scripture. Sometimes people think that God does not make plans. God, ha, huh, do you know why human beings make plans? Because God himself makes plans. Some people think, you know, he's the Holy Spirit, you just be spontaneous. That spontaneity of the Holy Spirit was well planned by God. God began to plan for our salvation. The minute Adam and Eve sinned, right from then, he began to plan. It was a well, it was a well, and it was a plan from different angles. You know, you know, there are some people that think a certain way. When, when, when you present a problem or a project to them, they don't just think about one solution. They think about three. They can think about three different options of how to resolve this thing. I was reading a book, and um, the the minister was talking about a particular government leader in in America. In the, in the times of Kennedy, he was a Secretary of Defense. And the, 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 so they said about this man that he's, he was so intelligent that if you presented a problem or an issue to him, he said, I, I, cannot use, I cannot only think of one way. I have to have at least three different ways. That there's safety in knowing three different ways to resolve the issue or to um, perform the project. And you know, when I was reading that, reading that I smiled. You know why I smiled? Because Pastor Chuka is like that. When Pastor Chuka, in fact, people sometimes make, they make fun of it. You know, some, some of our pastor friends, they, they don't make fun of it in a, in a bad way. They just make fun of it and say, okay. You know, when, when, when we're having a meeting, let's say we're having a meeting with Pastor Anita. And she'll say, okay, this is what I want us to do. Or this is what we're having. You'll say, um, Pastor, there are three ways we can do this. And, and that's it. He always has more than one way. There's, there's a way. There's, there's a way that his mind works. Praise the Lord. So, for us, I was talking about God, that God is like that. 
God, God made sure that from whichever angle Satan wants to come in, whichever angle Satan wants to come in, he has blocked him. Salvation must take place. He had planned it right from time. So when, when Satan said, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to defile the seed. And angels began to have children with, with, uh, female, with uh, human ladies. They, you know, what? That, that their intention was to corrupt the seed. So that no way, no human being will be redeemable. Uh, but the Bible said, but Noah's family. That's why. Some people wonder, why did God destroy everybody else? There was only one family on earth that kept themselves. That were walking with God. Was, and the Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. If you go into First or Second Peter, it says Noah was a preacher. So Noah wasn't just building the ark. Because people would have asked, why are you building the ark? He was telling them this is what's going to happen. And no, if anybody had listened to him and entered the ark, they would have been saved along with Noah's family. God always make, gives a witness to men. Always. So, that, so God did not say, I'm going to destroy, destroy everybody without giving them a chance to change. No. The Bible says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. And so God had to clean up the earth. Because the Bible says even the animals had become wicked. That was, they were not like that. But they had become wicked. So, um, look at God. We said for every angle. Now let's look at something that God told Moses. Exodus chapter 25. And I'm beginning to round up now, and um, I'm on the third point. Because I'm practicing something new, I'm going to finish on this point, and we'll continue on Wednesday with the fourth point. Okay. So I would, I would invite you to make sure that you're in church on Wednesday. And those of you that are in Ipswich, Brother Leo is going to get... A copy of the message, and he will share what I said on Wednesday with you on Thursday. For everybody else in Colchester, be sure to be here so that you can hear the, the end of this message. So, Exodus chapter 26, verse. Let me make sure I find it. 25. Exodus chapter 25. Exodus 25 verse 40. Are you there? Exodus 25 verse 40. Now look at what God told Moses. He said, And look that thou make them. He was talking about the building of the tabernacle. And he told him about all the different vessels and all the different materials that were to be used. Then he said, And look that thou make them after their pattern which was showed thee in the mount. That word pattern, it means model. It means a plan. You know, it actually means a construction. You know, for, for people who are into construction these days, if they want to build a big building, a lot of times, they already have a, a scalable model of it. So you can actually see how it looks. It's not just a flat drawing. You actually see how it looks. When I saw that and I checked that word and I saw that the word, that word pattern means model, construction, I realized what happened to Moses in the mountain. God didn't just give him the measurements which he gave them. Moses actually saw what it would look like in 3D. No, it's true. He saw it in 3D. It wasn't just a flat thing. Everything that man can do, God has already gone beyond it. Don't think our inventions are surprising God. Ah, come and see what these people are doing now. And God is very surprised. We, it's not that we think that was surprising God. God is saying, okay, they are catching up now. They are catching up now. Praise the Lord. So don't, don't think... Yesterday I was talking to Pastor Chuka on Skype because I was here in Colchester and you know I was using my phone but it was a video connection and I was thinking and I just remembered back to the future how we were so is tripped so inspired that he could just hold his, his, his watch and he was talking to the person and the person could see him and he could see the person I said it's Skype now 
and you know even now samsung has a, a phone like i mean a gadget like that that you just you just strap on your wrist and it, you can do it praise the lord so god said make sure you do it so when you have a plan now sometimes when you have a plan it may not be exact but you start with the rough plan when you go back to the plan you'll see how to improve it you go back to you see how to improve it but some people just keep on improving the plan but never do anything sometimes the plan can only be improved when you start but you have your plan and one of the things bible says in the multitude of counselors there is safety then david said you know solomon said it but it, I, I know he learned it from david he said with with many counselors that shall make war get the right people who understand different aspects of this thing don't be a one-man band have you ever seen a one-man band they have the symbols here they are doing like this to knock the symbols they are they are doing the they are trying to blow all the instruments at the same time it doesn't work don't be a one-man band get people who understand it get a lawyer who understands this area get an accountant who can give you good advice praise the lord get somebody who knows how the best way for this thing yes you know like me i'm pastor val there are things that i know but i know that there are things that some people know better than me in this church so why should i try to i can learn from them but i know that it, for, for me to get the best result let them do it i can sing can i not sing but there are people that can sing better than me let them sing Imagine if I was trying to sing that song that we sang just today, today for you. You'd have been managing it. <laughs> but that been, there, was some, there was somebody singing it and you were truly blessed without distractions. Praise the Lord. It's true. So don't be a one-man band. But for you to do it, you must have a plan. There's no building without a plan. There's no building. Unless you want to build a hut. You know, people that build huts, they don't plan. They just, they don't even dig. They just carry the mud. Boom. They know somehow. And a lot of times, that mud, that mud, everything is inside that one room. The kitchen, the bedroom. What else? The, the toilet is outside. <laughs> That's why they have a, an outhouse. Because they lack the education to build properly. So everything is in that one room. So if they even want to do it good, they will just create a curtain. A curtain to separate the kitchen from the living room, bedroom. So the, the living room, bedroom, everything is one room. Then there's a curtain. Then the next, behind the curtain, is the kitchen. But when they built, all they did, they just, they just managed to remember to build a window and a door. So if you want to build a mud hut, you don't need to plan. But anything beyond that, you must have a plan. So, and this year is a year of greatness. Nobody will walk beside a hut and say it's great. Nobody will praise you for building a hut. This year, don't plan to build a hut. Anybody that praises you for building a hut, they don't like you. It's true. So you want to be praised for doing small things. This year, you will not be praised for doing small things. Because it's your year of greatness. You will do great things this year. Greatness is in you. You will not be that, that ego that flies, that left his place and came down to start eating corn. Chickens that he's supposed to be eating, he now joined them to start eating corn with them. That's not your calling at all. Because the Lord has made you great. Stand up on your feet. Talk to God about what you've heard. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mansoda, here for Sabah. Ah, those Kabania. 